Welcome to the High Voltage Light Electric Vehicle Channel. I've been catching up on quite a few design tasks this week and making a few things. So I thought maybe people might be interested in seeing some of that. So this has included working on uh, Enduro style mounts for the Back 2000 and the Fire Driver. And I also got to play a bit with my new multi-material printer uh, to create some cool sort of logo designs for the side. I also think I found a way to construct a battery extension for the for the Elite light frame in a way that might actually be economical with, with North American manufacturing with just four bends and a couple of 3D printed parts. First thing um, to look at though is this uh, Bat 2000 mount that I've been making. And this is designed for with one of the narrower Corbic style frames. And it's specifically designed to attach onto the, the underside this style of frame and get the controller in this case about 2000 uh, as close as possible to the frame and then it keeps all of the wiring going internally as well to keep it all neat i i really enjoyed making this piece partly because it's going on to a uh, lightning rods build and partly because it let me try out some new techniques with the with the 3d printing um, the qr code on this side actually does scan which is kind of cool um, i was a little bit sort of dubious whether it would or not, but um, it does actually work, which is which is pretty awesome. Um, the one here I've done, this is for one of the, uh, one of the far driver controllers, which is this controller here. They're like really quite heavy and uh, heavy and chunky things. Um, anyway, this was uh, to make a mount for one of those. The one here is actually even bigger than the controller that I've got there. Um, it's basically got four attachment points with these 7.5 millimeter holes there. So I think you could probably put a tap on them uh, if you wanted to, um, but I'm going to have them, I'm going to have bolts going through. And then what I'll probably do is get the guy to countersink a little bit into the surface. So you get a nice flush finish with the bolts and then use some sort of locking nut on the other side, um, probably a nylock or something to make sure that it can't, uh, can't vibrate loose when it's being when it's being used. Um, this definitely uh, a project I enjoyed very much. Uh, the guy I'm doing this for uh, was one of my very first customers um, that had me make a mount for the, the back 8000 and he wanted to, to redo a similar kind of logo um, for that one. So this is for this is for really quite a wide frame Enduro mount. I think really you're gonna have to use the biggest frames to make using the far driver control is realistic. Otherwise, there's just um, not going to be enough room on the frame really to fit to fit anything on. I, I've really been enjoying using the uh, the color swapping. Um, I've done it in the past where I've swapped colors, but it's not been it's been a bit of a pain in the butt. And I mean, you can see the difference between the photos of the first man I made for this and and what I can do. Uh, with the colors on this new one because you just get this nice finish uh, and you can make it have quite a kind of a shiny finish as well so it, it almost it's hard to tell um, that this surface has been 3d printed certainly from a, from a distance which is which is good the last part of this video looks at making a battery box extension for the elite light frame a few people in discord have been trying to figure out how to make something to allow for a bigger battery and the issue is not so much designing something that would work as designing something that would be economical to make in North America because the cost of machining in North America is horrendous. So we can make a fancy thing like this with lots of bending and lots of folds, um, welding, powder coating. But by the time it's been cut, bent, welded and powder coated, it's more expensive than buying the damn frame. So this is what I think would be probably a good compromise. And we're still using metal, but it's been reduced to a minimum number of cuts as well as the most efficient shape. Effectively, you'd need a sheet of metal with the dimensions, and then you'd need to bend it in four places. And then punching and drilling the holes for bolts should be fairly straightforward after that. The rest of it is going to be 3D printed parts to go at the front and the back. I hope that the combination of minimal machining and using 3D printing will be less expensive to operate and allow this to be produced at a more acceptable cost. 
I think there's some room for people to get kind of creative with this design and modify it to fit exactly the battery they need. If somebody wanted to pay more to have something like laser etched something in the panel, they probably could, or you could route extra access holes through the 3D printed part. The whole point of this exercise is essentially to let people run a slightly larger battery than is possible with the current space. And the version that I've done here has actually been sized with an eye on using the pouch cells. So a battery here could be easily around sort of 30 amp hours using those. And with the existing size, it's actually tough to try and get 20 amp hours in. So that's all I've got going on for this week. I'm still working on my CYC photon review. I've done a lot more riding in some hotter weather. Uh, I really wanted to get that done before I kind of give my opinion on it so I can see the difference between when I'm riding it around in the cooler weather um, that was in, in the earlier part of the year. Um, huge shout out to everyone that's watching. I really appreciate it. And particularly huge shout out to those that support the channel directly. Uh, thank you very much. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.